Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear participants of our international expert meeting, uh, in the name of the organizers of this event, the Anne Frank House, the Anne Frank Centrum, and the Federal Agency for Civic Education, I would like to welcome you to the opening of this week's international expert meeting, Stories That Move. The meeting brings together 60 experts from 14 countries all over Europe and they are here in Berlin to discuss with us how we can fight against or combat against anti-Semitism, racism and other forms of discrimination with educational means. We have to look for a way of presenting materials and methodology that all teachers think are useful, whether they want to focus more on this or on that. It will give them insight into mechanisms um, of prejudice, of hate, but also in educational approaches to discuss it all with students. So for this conference, I'm just so happy that something is being done. Whereas before, sometimes you had this feeling that the right are marching through unopposed. When I see conferences like this, it makes me think, no, there are people who care and who are willing to get together and try and do something about it. So at least they're trying, and I love to see that people are trying. We learn from people of African descent what it is like to hear people make monkey noises when they walk down the street. We hear from Muslim women what it feels like when their fellow travelers move away from them in the bus, fearing that there may be a bomb in their handbag. We hear from Roma that they are not allowed to use a swimming pool in their village because their owner worries about his business. And we learn from LGBT people what impact it has on them that they cannot go to a gay bar without fearing an attack. These challenges need to be dealt with by political leaders, by the criminal justice system, by civil society, by equality bodies, but significantly also by educators. I think that I'm expecting to have to see lots of fights. Why do I say so? Because I, these, are, these are meetings of, of experts. And, and to be an expert, that means that you have a sense of beliefs, and you, have this, and you believe that these are the, are you, are you are believing in certain ways, or, or certain tools, or in certain methods of doing things. Now, when you put these experts together, everyone has their own beliefs. The question is, which belief would give, and which one wouldn't? So it will be very interesting to see how these how dialogues are negotiated and how people kind of accept what to what what to take away what to take in and what to give up and what to add into what they know. My question goes to Hilda. And there's a room full of important people in there. Teachers and uh, scientists and uh, other experts. Uh, what can these people do um, to stop discrimination? When I was younger, I did encounter racism because the Vietnamese people who came to Slovakia, they also did not know the language, did not know any people, did not have friends, did not have family, and they had to start over new, and they had to start their own businesses, and. People uh, often think that we come to Slovakia or t to that country to steal jobs, which was not true. I would like to have some insights how to walk uh, with uh, personal stories in my own countries, in my own country, in Ukraine. Country-wise, I've got England, Hungary, and my parents are from Jamaica. My, I was born in London, therefore discrimination was something that I went through growing up in London. I then moved to Budapest, where again I found some forms of dif discrimination as well. For me, the whole idea of a conference about anti-discrimination, particularly in education, 
it's something that I want for my children because I don't particularly want my children to go through what I went through. I grew up in a neighbourhood in London which was purely skinheads. People ask me why I became a history teacher. I'd always said, of course, until I was about eight, I was not sure who won the Second World War. Yeah, walking around in London, of course. Well, number one, my area was full of swastikas. I remember there was a guy in my neighbourhood who had a dog called Hitler. So you're walking down the street and you hear him shouting, Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. I think that one of the, the biggest challenges today is really how to make anti-Semitism relevant uh, to everybody and in the modern day, and not only as a historical uh, event um, happening. Um, how do you uh, help people to see that Jew, even not being Jewish, how it's relevant for them, anti-Semitism? How does it manifest itself today? And also to, uh, to not be afraid that it's going to detract from other forms of discrimination which are very real. So we really need to avoid sense of competition of suffering uh, in terms of uh, anti-Semitism and, and other forms of discrimination. One of the youngsters said today, um, uh, in Hungary I deal with the discrimination against Roma and that is where I deal with and um, um, that doesn't matter that anti-Semitism is not important but um, uh, maybe they can understand anti-Semitism better as it is connected with their the forms of discrimination that they know. What, I, what I'm doing, what, I, what, what my research is on, is trying to bring up these issues so that these things can be talked about. Because the point is that not talking about racism doesn't make racism go away. Not talking about anti-Semitism doesn't make that go away. I think the dialogue is very essential in, if we want to achieve any form of change. we would like to develop a web toolkit that can be used all over Europe uh, when teachers want to deal with anti-Semitism, racism and other forms of discrimination. And my expectation is that we get a lot of ideas from all the experts and that we get a lot of input that later on we can continue work with that. We think that the toolkit should be a dynamic system that enables users not only to consume high quality content, but to create it and to contribute it back into the system. Why do we think this is important? Teachers and educators are special people. They are typical makers, fine tuners, and customizers. They have very precise needs. They understand the other teachers and peoples and learners' very precise needs. They create a lot. Okay. <laughs> we created an online tool um, in which people can uh, see if they are stereotyped and they can just check if their image of other people is correct or not. So this question is, I am religious. Thanks. We discussed it during these uh, days how uh, we could include uh, the young people in, in this process and how we could include it uh, from the uh, space which is uh, very close to them, like blogs, like social networks. We got a lot of uh, good insights in what should we focus on, what is the connection between history and the uh, and the present day's issue, so I thought, I think we, we had good discussions on that. And at some points we also got very concrete what this web toolkit should look like. The picture you show and the words you show on that first page that they see, um, um, when there's written anti-discrimination or anti-Semitism, 
a lot of people would already feel ex maybe excluded because okay this is not not about me discussed uh, that sexism and classism was not brought to the foreground. So there were some discussions about it. Uh, how does it affect your whole life if your family background is an uneducated one? We should, should address much more structures. Like during this week I had the feeling that we address a lot of personal issues like the acceptance, tolerance, we like each other, even the experience of the youngsters. Of course it was a nice experience to accepting each other and so on, but there are structures behind. We've had the problem that we're not really sure how to define discrimination as a whole, whereas the different groups say on racial discrimination, anti-Semitism, anti-Gypsyism or anti-Roma, they, those people know exactly what's going on, but as a group, we're saying not even the United Nations has a generic definition of discrimination. We still try to find a solution that in schools, where you do not only deal with one issue, but as a teacher you have to have answers to many sorts of problems and different kinds of discrimination. Open your eyes and give me the best smile and best mood you ever have, okay? So, come, come a little bit uh, closer to me. What really worked well was to bring together people from different areas, to inspire them, but also to see where do we have problems that we have in common, but uh, there are also differences we have to look at. And this I found very inspiring and very interesting. I feel very confident that it's going to be a huge challenge that we will be able to deal with in a satisfying way. Because we have a strong international team, we've worked together before, and there is this urgent need. No one's going to say, oh, it's too difficult, let's not do it. We all feel we really need to do something that will be um, helping teachers. That's it.